All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, we are back again on the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. And for the past 24 hours, it has been a lot to do about Armando Broja, not just the Chelsea fan base, Albanian fan base, um, and then, you know, all the youth sort of fans out there, people that love the Youth Academy, um, of, of course, the Southampton fan base as well. They are so excited about Armando Broja. And the reason being, he's scored another clutch winner against Hungary. This is now the second time he's done that against Hungary. Uh, both the times it's been 1-0 victories. But it's the mannerism of how he's scoring. And honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced that this particular player will make it at Chelsea at some point, whether it's next season, whether it's the season after. I've seen enough raw talent where I feel as the years go by, he will develop into a monster. If you tell me right now who's got a better chance between, let's say, Tammy Abraham coming back to Chelsea or Armando Broja getting an opportunity at Chelsea, I think it's going to be Armando Broja. Um, I'm not sure if the viewers uh, who are watching this right now, if you've seen the finish of Armando Broja for Albania last night, I do suggest check that out. And also check check out just his last few finishes, not just for Southampton in the Carabao Cup where he features, where he scored a couple of goals, but especially for Albania, some of the finishes that he's scoring. Let, let's face it, Albania is not one of the top clubs in world football. And he's doing the bits against a team like Hungary that posed big, big issues in Euros. They're a very decent team. But let's have a look at this whole Armando Broja story and as to why I think he's going to make it and why I think he's a better chance than Tammy Abraham um, of making it at Chelsea. We do have that buyback uh, for Tammy. Uh, but I, I think it's Armando Broja that's going to get the get the big shot at Chelsea. Now, Armando Broja, he signed a big long-term contract last season. He's only 20 years of age, tall, tall player, 1.9 metres tall. He signed the contract for five years, which is going to go till June 30th, 2026. He's on loan at the moment, as you all know, at Southampton for a season, season-long loan. And yeah, there's just so much to like about this particular player. He started off the preseason with, you know, I, I thought he had a lot of class about him. I thought he had something about him. And I honestly, for a second, I thought maybe we could just use him as a backup player, um, you know, someone who can possibly fe feature in the cup matches, someone who can come off the bench um, and, and, you know, have that impact if we need, you know, a, a particular figure up front to, to replace Lukaku in certain games. But look, obviously we've got so much depth with Timo Werner and Kai Havertz and whatnot. It was only reasonable that he's gone on a loan. But for a second in the preseason, especially, I remember, I think it might have been against Bournemouth where he scored a goal and he came off the bench. He looked very good. Uh, the way, the energy that he had, the way he attacked the box um, and he was quite alive um, for scoring that goal against Bournemouth. But to his uh, own development, which is probably the right thing from Chelsea, ended up going to Southampton. And so far this season, this is what's happened. He's featured four times in the Premier League, 83 minutes. So he hasn't featured as yet for Southampton. We'll touch about that. Uh, Hassan Huddle had some uh, fine things to say about him, which I think he should take it in a positive manner and you know, something to look forward to and something to work on. Uh, down the track, but I've got no doubt sooner or later he will crack into this Southampton starting 11 and he'll start getting those minutes. At the moment, he's only got four features uh, and 83 minutes, but he's started two Carabao Cup games, I believe, um, and scored two goals so far, 185 minutes played. And uh, let's have a look at it. You know, he's played 19 minutes against Newcastle, 16 minutes against West Ham, 22 minutes against um Man City, 26 minutes against Wolves where there was a loss. So pretty sure he, he would have, you know, he would have liked a better um, solution for that. At the end of the day, all the other ones were draws. Um, this one was a loss, so I'm, I'm sure he probably wouldn't appreciate that. But in the EFL Cup, in the Carabao Cup, um, two starts looks like. Well, yeah, two starts, um, 65 minutes, 120 minutes, uh, two goals against uh, Newport Country. In the international front is where he's done a lot of damage. 
six games, three goals, two assists, but in recent times, goal against Hungary, um, assist, sorry, yeah, goal against Hungary, goal against San Marino and two assists where he came off the bench at halftime and Hungary uh, against, um, yeah, against Hungary, one goal where he came off the halftime as well. 24 minutes against Hungary, 12 minutes against Hungary, 45 minutes against San Marino. This is the damage that he's... We'll look at what he did at Vitesse last season. Uh, we'll look at that very soon. But this is what he's done uh, in the international stage in recent times. 12 minutes against Hungary, 1-0. 45 minutes against San Marino, uh, where he came off the bench. Goal and an assist, 5-0 win. 24 minutes against Hungary, 1-0. Two 1-0 victories coming straight from him and, and against Hungary. And it's as I said, it's the manner of how he's scoring, especially... Last night, he was literally on the right side in the edge and he took a snapshot. And this is the thing. So many things to like about him. Uh, his shooting technique. He's, he's, he's got this tall structure. Um, the way he scored this goal against Hungary, he used his pace as well. So it looks like he's got a lot of pace um, You know, with that height that he has. Hopefully, he can develop his aerial game. Um, you know, he's young, so he should be very energetic and could be a very solid second striker for us down the track alongside Romelu Lukaku if we ever want to play two up top. Um, I just want to quickly show you guys what Hassan Horo had to say. So this is what Saints um, Live, a particular Twitter account, said. He still has something to, to, uh, to prove before he can be handed that first Premier League start. And this is what Hassan Horo had to say, which is interesting, and we need to understand this. At the end of the day, he's only 20. Um, so this is what he had to say. He's a little bit slow starter, uh, Hassan Haru admitted, speaking about the 20-year-old last month. You need to push him a little bit. He's moving in the right direction now. He's showing me what I want to see, and that, and this is very positive for me. The way we play is a little bit different to how he has played so far in his career. It's a little bit more energetic. I would not say... Uh, that he was lazy, but in the beginning, he did not show me the qualities that he has. He said, uh, when you arrive at a new club, you must show the qualities that you have. He has done this during the last two games. He did that against Newcastle and against West Ham. For me, this is a very good sign. Now, this is fantastic. And this is exactly what I want to see. Um, someone like Broha too. At, with Hassan Haru in Southampton, it's a high energetic Lots of pressing. It's it's a good team to learn your trade from there, especially if you're going to play for Chelsea. That's exactly the traits that you need. You need to press from the front. You need to win the ball on the opposition half, and you really need to box them in and find your opportunities in those areas. So I, I love the fact that he's getting that loan stint at Southampton, and Hassan Horo is the perfect coach for him. This is what I had to tweet out yesterday off the back of the winner that he scored against Alba uh, for Albania against Hungary. Broha has all the attributes to be a monster striker. No doubt he'll make it bigger. Chelsea, it's mad. Southampton don't start him more regularly. Their loss really, look, I mean, I was just a bit gassed up. I'm pretty sure he's going to start very soon for Southampton. It'll, I'll find it very surprising if, if Broha doesn't crack into that starting eleven very soon. This is what Albanian fans are saying. I remember the days of wishing some players would choose Albania. I remember being disappointed when they went different ways. But this Armando Broha is special breed. He's different. We finally have someone we can be excited about. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I fully believe Armando Broha is going to be a big deal in, in the coming seasons. Obviously, this season, he's still developing. But next season or the season after, if he has a top season this season, somehow he you know, starts developing from here on in and really cracks into the Southampton first team, develops you know, all those attributes, pressing, shooting technique is already good. The energy that Hassan Haru was talking about, um, you know, aerial ability, just that overall technicality, he's got the pace. So if he can just all box it in together, I think he's going to be a supreme, supreme talent for us. Uh, as I said, whether it's next season or the season after, I think he's probably got a bigger opportunity, in my personal view, than Tammy Abraham, honestly speaking. Uh, as much as I like Tammy, as much as he's a very good player, but I feel Armando Broja is a bigger talent than Tammy Abraham. Let me know what your thoughts are, ladies and gentlemen, about this. Do you think Armando Broja is going to make it at Chelsea? Could you possibly picture Romelu Lukaku and Armando Broja 
in the future, um, you know, playing together. Let me know your thoughts. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the bell notification as well to keep in touch with all my content. Until next time, see you.